Now, here in this playlist in which this video occurs, Radical Esotericism, I'm formally, link, formally linking together world affairs and what's going on in this world, the control hierarchy associated with it, embedded in it, and it's part of this planet, this prison planet, a control hierarchy, and what, they're, what, what things are associated with that hierarchy, it concerns us, this control hierarchy, which has a greater grip on humanity than many care to realize or care to admit or care to even think about. Or perhaps even feel that it's not even worth their attention. This control system that imprisons us and enslaves us consciously, that our consciousness hijacks our consciousness, as well as our labor and our energy goes far beyond the physical plane of this planet into its other planes, as well as far beyond this planet, no matter what planes of that we're talking about. But the question may arise in your mind. What is the purpose, Theron Q. Ramacharaka, of giving any attention to any of that stuff if I am on the road self-mastery and personal involvement toward true selfhood and even further into a conscious awareness of the relationship of my true self with the universal self the universal I and beyond even that into a recognition of my total dependence for existence upon the absolute beyond it all what would be the purpose? And if I am going to give any attention to any of that other stuff, to what extent should I give it? For I've heard some people say, I'm not buying into that thing about, yeah, consciousness hijacking going on. Control hierarchy wants to take over humanity. Well, even if there is such a thing, let them do it. Good for them. Whatever. And I've been asked questions like, well, how much attention should I give to any of that? Well, there's another question about it that I'm going to ask. How do we know much about any of that? And how much of it should we think is true? Well, these are all good questions, and I'm going to attempt to answer them to some extent right now. First of all, awareness of the state of affairs is a pretty good idea if we wish to gain mastery, self-mastery, and by the way, I'm just going to throw in here right now something more about New Age religion and all of its talk about ascension. Ascension over whatever. Ascension over nature. Ascension over this. Ascension over that. Ascension into some new dimension and so forth. Of what purpose is any of that? That's just absurd until a person has gained mastery over himself and gained conscious awareness of his true self and gained complete and utter mastery over his mental tools over his mind until that point is attained until that is attained it's just absurd to talk about ascension over anything Now, I recently posted another video here in this playlist, Radical Esotericism. What did I call it? Let me take a look. Just a moment, please. Bear with me here. Apathy is futile. That's what it's called. Apathy is futile. So this is kind of a follow-up to that one. 
Maybe I'll even have the sense to place this one right after that one. I don't know. Maybe I'll find it more sensible to place it somewhere else. Still in this playlist. Radical esotericism. But still, once again, why pay any attention to that? Well, let's take a look at something here. Whenever I give somebody a new client in self-mastery or personal unfoldment, personal involvement, I want them to take stock of their current state of mind. And I go about it in several ways. I go about it a slightly different way with each person. It's a pretty good idea to know exactly what you're dealing with from the start, what your starting point is, and what the conditions are at the moment, so that we know what we're working with, so that we know the current state of affairs. We know that we want to know the current state of affairs so that we can know the current state of affairs. I, I know that's kind of like a nonsense thing to say. It's kind of, you know, just a circular little thought. But think about that little circle for a moment, and maybe it'll begin to make sense. It's a good idea to know what you're up against, to know what you're working with, and what might be working against you, in order to proceed in the best, logical, efficient, and effective manner. Well, let's just expand that idea a little bit here now and talk about awareness at a slightly different level. Let's just assume for a moment that there is an hierarchy of beings who are extremely good at control of consciousness. Not their own. I'm not talking about their own. I'm talking about control of others' consciousness. Let's say that there's an entire hierarchy of entities and beings and hooligans and whatevers that have a great interest in humanity because humanity provides them with mental food, energy, psychic food, astral food, labor, physical labor, and so forth. And that other than that, they have no interest in humanity whatsoever. They don't like humanity, and they think that humanity is ugly and abhorrent, and cattle, and just slaves, and to be messed with, to be screwed around with, to be played with, to be prodded, and to be killed, and to be a source of energy, psychic and otherwise. And that it's a pretty good idea to keep humanity in a low state of consciousness so that they can't figure any of this out. As a matter of fact, to keep them bewildered and confused over the actual state of affairs to such an extent that they can't even understand or comprehend the state of affairs. And by all means, to keep them from doing anything like attaining self-mastery or personal unfoldment or true self-actualization because, whoa, by hell, if you do any of that, well then, there will be no control over them anymore, eventually, except for perhaps just physically. But let's assume also for just a moment that affairs go even further than that, and that ways and means are being put into place and have been getting put into place for quite a long time to prevent humanity from ever achieving anything like self-mastery or personal unfoldment toward true selfhood to such an extent that perhaps it's the case that things are just about to click into order that would prevent humanity on this planet from ever being able to do that. Even on into reincarnating on this planet over and over again with no hope of way out. Let's just say
Do you think then that it might be a pretty good idea if you are embarking on a path of self-mastery and personal involvement that it might behoove you to place some attention on the actual state of affairs that exists right now? That involves that. That influences that. That it has so much to do with it that it's not even a separate state of affairs or a separate issue. That it's all part of the package. Such that the question, why well, think about that if I'm doing this? Because that is part of this. I mean, what would be the point in getting in your car and driving anywhere if you're not even really aware of your car or what things influence your car? What things might keep it from running well today? Like, let's say there's a big wall in front of your car and you just put it in drive and go. Not paying any attention to the wall. Because you think that's just something separate from you and your car and where you're going. There it is. But you just say, oh, well, so be it. The wall wants to stand there. I don't care. Has nothing to do with me and where I'm going. That just seems kind of stupid, doesn't it? Equally as ignorant. I propose is ignoring the state of affairs in this planet. And the extremely intelligent, organized, money backed, and entity driven, malignant, malicious, and sinister, non human, entity driven forces behind the fact. This is a consciousness and physical work imprisoning planet. So that's some reason why it's worth your consideration to know what you're dealing with, to know what things are going to be blocking your path, to comprehend in the least the urgency of the matter that you have interest in of the road upon which you are embarking. Now I confess, I, the Ryan Q. Ryan Taraka, that I am much more well-versed in matters of self-mastery and personal unfoldment than I am in exactly what the heck's going on in this planet. The things to which I allude about that. I am more well-versed in the one thing than the other. Therefore, I do not claim to have all the truth about the actual state of affairs that surround this planet as they affect personal involvement. I am much more versed or convinced that I know what these effects would be as stumbling stones and roadblocks to self-mastery and personal involvement than I am the exact nature of those influences and factors. But I'm doing my best here in this channel to put some of this stuff out front here for you. If I make a mistake, please excuse me. But there is something there. There is something going on. 
and it is worth our attention, and it is of greater impact and of greater magnitude than most people can even understand. Because how in the world can you see what's outside of the box when you're inside of it and your consciousness is put into such a spell that you cannot see outside of it? You cannot see who's holding the box. How in the world would you know? It's worth some consideration, wouldn't you say? Let's just take a look at something that I posted a video about already. The video was called Fake Humanity. I said at the end of the video, watch out for the fakes. Well, let's just say that it is the case that the manifested cosmos... is a bit along the lines of like a meta or macrocosmic holographic display. And that our little knowledge of holography and so forth, you know, the matrix, of whatever extent we want to take that, is a microcosmic picture of the macrocosmic holographic functioning and operation. And that there's a deceptive quality to all of it, unless we can see extremely clearly from, let's say, a state of 100% cosmic consciousness exactly what's going on. Well, this makes the entire universe somewhat pliable, doesn't it? Now, let's say also that there is an entire, an entire hierarchy of beings starting all the way with the beings at the top of the ladder. That there is an element of deception among some of them, such that filtering down through this hierarchy of deceptive stuff, <clears throat> As things arrive closer and closer to this planet, closer and closer to our current levels of consciousness, there is an increasing propensity for deception. Not just the world of Maya or illusion, but an intentionally created state of illusion and deception to keep us trapped exactly where we're at for use as slaves, for use as energy fodder in the least. Let's just say that our entire perceptual matrix, our entire perceptual framework is so trapped and guided and controlled, that we might as well put forth the proposition that we're living in a fake universe of the illusory universe, or within the illusory universe, a fake within a deceptive and illusory universe, a fake within that. And there may be several levels of fake within even that. Let's just say I'm going to propose that it's true. How many fake things can we think of? False ego, for one. Identification with the false ego. Raja Yoga and other techniques. Stuff here in my channel. One way to describe the purpose of it all, not the end all goal, but one way to describe what some of that what most of that is up to, one of its aspects is dissolution of identity with the false ego. False, there's the key word, fake. Not the real thing. But a perception of the fake being the real thing. There's a place to start when it comes to fake. Now let's just say that entities that have a lot better 
control over us than we think they do and that we have over ourselves know all about the false ego and take full advantage of that propensity within us to identify with our false egos and perhaps have even played a role in us even becoming that way in the first place long ago. Let's just say that wouldn't it be a good idea to be aware of that shenanigans and that holy gunnery and that chicanery? Wouldn't it be a pretty good idea? I mean, after all, in our business affairs, we want to know all about somebody who might be playing a little game with us, don't we? We don't say, well, I'm just going to go ahead and do my work here and I'm going to try to sell my products or I'm going to buy this product, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And if somebody's trying to trick me, trying to deceive me into buying a bad good or a bad service or something phony or fake, let them do it. I don't care. I'm just going to keep on doing what I'm doing. That would be silly, wouldn't it, in the business world? Well, then why in the world would it be silly with something of far greater importance? I present you that question to answer for yourself. That thing of far greater importance would be your own personal involvement in this cosmos. The thing you're interested in, if you'd be paying a lot of attention to my channel, probably into my channel, for that purpose. <clears throat> what about artificial intelligence? Didn't it used to be the case that knowledge was passed on verbally? Then it was written in books? How many times through history do you think there might have been an effort, quite successful at, at times, to burn books, to get rid of knowledge, to get rid of the truth? Why would that be done? But now we have artificial intelligence. All our data and memory is stored there. It's pretty easy to get rid of, isn't it? Artificial intelligence. The word artificial, the word fake is right in it. That's one step away from being human, isn't it? Our memory is on hard drives. Let's think of another example of fake. How about building materials? Now, true, it would be kind of a depletion on natural resources to continue building everything out of metal would, wouldn't it? So there seems to be a positive aspect to making fake building products or making fakes of the fake building products, more and more synthetic stuff, more and more things contrived and manufactured and processed. But each one of these steps away from the real thing that we accept to be the way things are is another step in our perception of affairs and our consciousness away from anything genuine. What's another example? Well, synthetics in themselves, all synthetic products. The very idea of synthetic seems to be taken to be just kind of like a natural thing these days, but how natural really is it? Okay, synthetic products are largely made out of petroleum, but are they petroleum anymore? How far away from petroleum really are they? At what point do we call them fake? This might seem a little bit absurd to you at the moment, but then I suggest if it seems absurd to you on the grounds that this is just the way things are, Synthetics are a part of everyday life. They're a necessary thing. This is just how stuff works. I'm going to propose to you that you have bought into synthetic consciousness and perception over affairs. You might get a little bit annoyed for a day if some new level of synthetic, synthetic, synthetic comes out because you'll say, well, that's not the real thing anymore. That's not plastic even. And then you'll get over it, right? You'll start to get, you know, to accept this new 
level of fakery of the fakery of the fakery and then you know you'll start to say if somebody at some point says hey well let's take a look at this isn't this a little bit fake and you'll say huh what are you talking about this is, this is the way things are well yes as a matter of fact it is the way things are I'm trying to get you to understand that that's exactly the way things are fake and synthetic let's take another look at something else how about Digitized information and media. Digitized media. Let's talk about, let's say, for example, music. Digitized music, synthetic music. And we call it music. I made another video about that. Already here. Something about, you know, back when music actually used to be created with instruments. Well, it still is, it still is, but most, a lot of popular music, you know, it's digitally processed, it's digitally this, it's digitally that, it's electronic this, it's electronic that, and we dance to it? Consider for a moment the actual effect that music and sound has on our consciousness. And what if that sound was never made with anything genuine at all? but a contrivance of digital electronics. How about fakes of fakes? What does that do? Where does that put us with respect to our consciousness, to our perception of affairs? When we have fakes of fakes, we want to do I'm talking about a list of things that are fake here, Fakery itself is another one. I think we're moving a little bit further away from being human with each one of these things. And consider everything that I've just listed so far, how many examples and different categories there are under each one of those in our everyday lives. And what about the education system? And a lot of its fakery of information, its socialization that it puts us through. It's guiding us into fake knowledge. That's a whole category of its own. A lot of deception going on there. And I'll point out right now that all the social institutions, all the institutions that we face in life from the moment we are born that have anything at all to do with our socialization process. And as I said, apathy is, in, in apathy is futile, that video, I even pointed out the shapes of our houses and what those have to do with anything and our consciousness. All of these things providing a fake perception of reality or a perception of a fake reality, a fake universe. Fakes, fakes themselves, the very idea, the very fact that it's happening in our perception, in our lives. If this doesn't seem to have any impact on your consciousness right now, what I'm saying about that, then perhaps it's time to give it further consideration because you've been faked out. What about states of mind via psychotropic drugs, antidepressants, anti-anxiety medications, and anything else? of the sort, fake states of consciousness, just with respect to those things. A large portion of our contemporary society is using such medications to deal with the problems of life. These are fake states of consciousness, fake moods. What about prosthetics, fake limbs? fake organs. These are all things that, of course, we would say are beneficial to mankind. Yes, indeed, they do serve their purpose, but at some point, at some point, something comes along and pushes all these things just a little bit too far, and I'm referring here in specific to the transhumanist agenda, part of which involves planning and implementing into the human biology silicon chips and other mechanisms that are not innately part of the human body but someday 
somebody will walk along and say, well, that's just the way things are. It's part of humanity. And now, what kind of humanity would that be? When a silicon chip works perfectly well with a carbon-based body and can be controlled remotely just as easily as our minds can be planted with thoughts even now remotely with entire perceptual frameworks remotely and is being done take my word for it if you think none of this has anything to do whatsoever with your embarking on road to self-mastery. Think again. What else might we say is fake? How about fake money? Money! That thing that we all strive to get in this life, the thing we all need as an exchange of value, to be the medium in an exchange of value. Money itself is kind of fake if we think about it when we consider exchanges of value. Money is the medium of an exchange of value. It's not the value itself. It's not the thing we really want. But we go at it like that's the very end of all life, the very purpose that we're here sometimes. The quest for money, the more and more of it. We need to have it in order to get anywhere and do anything or have anything we actually want, don't we? And yet even it is becoming fake, more and more so. Um, what about when we go get a loan and there's not even really any money there to give us the loan with? It's all done on paper. Of course, we are issued something that says there's value here. And we go to the bank and we do withdraw money, but less and less of money is even a real thing. Cyber money. Bitcoin. Disinformation and misinformation, fake information, disinformation in particular, especially disinformation about the fact of disinformation. How many layers of fake do you have right there? Information. This is the age of information, isn't it? It's also the age of disinformation. Fake information stored in fake memory, while we're going after fake money. Fake extraterrestrial vessels. Astral fakes. Boy, there's a whole new world of fakery just slamming us in the head right now, is there, for consideration? A whole new one with respect to consideration from this point of view of fakery. Have you watched my video series called The Astral World and how many hooligans and fakeries there are associated with the astral plane? astral plane, you say, oh, what does that have to do with me? Well, maybe go look at that video series and figure that out for yourself. And yet you want to say, well, I'm not interested in any hierarchy of beings on this planet that might want to control humanity. So what? Well, let's just consider furthermore that there's a whole shitload of such hierarchy in the astral plane, and they are closely associated with the beings on this planet that we can call barely human, if human at all, who are playing the role of controllers and masters of this human race on this prison planet. What does the astral plane have to do with you? It might seem like a rather remote thing, but the fakery in the astral plane has a lot to do with your life.
think I'll end this video here. There's a lot more I have to say along these lines. I've been going on here for a little over half an hour, so I'll just call it short here. As more comes up, I'll make some videos and post them here in this playlist. I'm Theron Q. Ryman Track, and uh, give this stuff its due attention. Don't give it your emotional energy. That would be undue. Be well.